Hey everyone, if you have wondered about what a vlogger is, that's why you clicked on this video to watch. Vloggers and vlogging are vastly different from the simple act of making a video. For example, I can take this camcorder and point it at something like this, right? And have you just read it. That's making a video. A vlogger doesn't do that as standard practice. A vlogger uses a video recording device, a camcorder, for example, to talk to you about their opinions, their observations, or to interview other people and get their opinions and observations and have a conversation with that person, thereby putting you in the position of being the third party in the conversation. You can't obviously talk directly to the person, but you can pretend like you're the person that's listening into their conversation, or maybe if it's live stream real time and you've got a Twitter or chat box, you can communicate that way. But the bottom line is, it's a talk. It's an expression. That is vlogging. Vlogging is like blogging, but using video. Vlogging is like blogging, but using video. I go back to, as an example, a book written by Scott Rosenberg several years ago called Say Anything. It was a great study of vloggers. So see, there I go again. Vloggers who basically did precisely what the title implied. They said anything. They'd blog about their feelings, their sex life, their ups, their downs, ideas, whatever. Say anything. Well, that's what vloggers do. In the early days of vlogging, going back to 2005, 2006, 2007, when I was at the first West Coast Vlogger Con, that's what people who got camcorders and put them to their face did. They used those devices to talk to you about something or show you something, but all the time they were talking to you. That's what they were doing. What happened since then is that people like Oprah Winfrey and others thought, hey, you know what, I can put my shows on here and you can see an excerpt from my show. Folks, that's not vlogging, okay? We thought, and this is, is 2007 when Oprah came on, in fact, it was November 7th of 2007, if memory serves, when Oprah came on, we all thought that Oprah was going to be a vlogger. And look, I wanna say one thing. I love Oprah Winfrey. She is an outstanding businesswoman, an outstanding member of American culture, an outstanding example for entrepreneurs, be they black, white, Asian, Hispanic, doesn't matter, and how most persons can achieve their objectives and goals. Oprah Winfrey is awesome. I am not attacking Oprah Winfrey, but what I'm saying is that Oprah disappointed all of us vloggers who thought that when she announced she was going to put a, have a channel on YouTube, and join the community that she was actually going to join the community. Talk to us. She didn't do that. And that ushered in the ruining of the art of vlogging. Because YouTube, over time, gained more views from sensational videos. We would see those videos go viral. And short clips that were not conversations at all. By contrast, from 2005 to 2008, and you would say, why 2008 when you said that Oprah came on in 2007? Good question, I'll get to that in a second. The top videos were more often than not on YouTube, were more often than not conversations. Links of videos that had conversational threads. Some of the most popular ones were, for example, when we all discovered that Lonely Girl the 15 wasn't 
a real person. It was actually an actress. Brie was an actress. We were floored. That conversation dominated YouTube top t videos, top vlogs for some time. Those days are gone. You have to go to Vloggerheads, a great website that I'm a part of, to find video bloggers, vloggers actually practicing the art. That's where you have to go. Now, the good news is that because of platforms like tout.com, Vine, to a, a much lesser degree, really, and Vimeo, you have, and also the Twitter video itself and Facebook video, you still have outlets to vlog. But the sad fact is that there isn't, in terms of percentage, and this is my anecdotal observation, as much vlogging going on as the technology allows. And it seems that we've ushered in a generation of people who they don't like to talk. They text a lot. The idea of face-to-face, -face, of telling you something, is wild to them. It's an anathema. They don't really know how to communicate. They communicate around people. They don't really say what's on their mind. And they're consistently frustrated because they can't quite get their point across because they don't know how because they're afraid to. That is awful. I'll tell you one thing. Vlogging is a good way to practice yourself out of that problem. That's right talking, expressing yourself, not being afraid to see your face, mouth moving, expressing an idea, forming sentences, paragraphs, thinking about what you said a few minutes ago in the same vlog and making sure that your next statement follows what you said before. If it doesn't, there's a reason why. Okay, there's a reason why. So, oh, you're saying, oh, by the way, Zinni, Speaking of that, why did you say that Oprah got on in 2007, but it wasn't until 2008 that conversational vlogging became less popular? I'll tell you why. Because Oprah's arrival didn't result in this you know, ramp up, also immediate change. It was gradual. And over that time, YouTube and vlogging grew rapidly. We went from the days of the the simple vlogs to, again, the conversational vlogs paced by folks like Renetto and Spricka24 and Kennergy on YouTube. And then Oprah came in. Of course, we had Rocket Boom, which was really a show vlog. It was a vlog because they were talking to you, but it was also a show. But make no mistake about it, Rocket Boom was a vlog. An excellent vlog by Andrew Michael Barron and Amanda Congdon. That was 2005, 2006. In 2007, they had their dust-up that was nationally broadcast and media outlets, mainstream media outlets like ABC News picked up on it and reported on this new phenomenon called vlogging and shows online. But the bottom line is, the show part aside, vlogging is what I am doing right now. Make no mistake about it. If you see anything other than this, where someone's not talking to you, it's not truly vlogging. There are vi a viral video is not a vlog, okay? A viral video is, a, is something where you're seeing an action happen. Now that doesn't mean a vlog can't go viral. For example, my interview of Laramie Tunsil, the Miami Dolphins NFL Draft 2016 first round pick went viral, but it's a vlog, it's an interview, conversation, right? Asked him the first two questions at the NFL draft last week. That's a viral video, yes, but it's also a vlog. But by and large, viral videos are not vlogs. But vlogs can go viral. Keep that in mind. I close with this. If you want to become a great vlogger, the way to do it is the same way you get to Carnegie Hall. Practice, practice, practice.